A new study from the Adventists, which is part of the Blue Zones, and people are supposed to you know, live to be 100 more than the average population. A new study from that population shows that animal product intake is not associated with increased all-cause mortality. And ultra-processed foods has a slight increased association with all-cause mortality. So what can we learn from this about the risks of different types of foods? I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com. And this is both an interesting and a very uninteresting study at the same time, I think, if that's possible. It's called Ultra Processed Food Intake and Animal-Based Food Intake and Mortality in the Adventist Health Study 2. And it's published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Now, first, to sort of lay the groundwork, this is a observational study using food frequency questionnaires, um, seven plus years of follow-up, Um, in a very specific population. This is the Adventist population, you know, which in Loma Linda is part of the blue zone. So it's a healthy starting point. These are people who in general, obviously there are going to be some differences, but in general sort of prioritize their health more than the average population, I think you could say. Now they also promote a vegetarian lifestyle. So interesting that there are quite a few people in here who do not follow vegetarian lifestyle and were eating meat. But as with a lot of observational studies, especially nutritional epidemiology, a healthy user bias is a very important concept because in studies, people who eat ultra processed foods tend to be less healthy in general and people who eat meat tend to be less healthy in general on average when you're looking at these big populations. And this study was no different. I'm gonna read right from the study here. Those with higher intake of both ultra processed foods and animal-based foods on average were younger which could be beneficial for them, less educated, had a higher BMI, were less likely married, they exercised less, had higher rates of smoking, more low sleep, and were more likely alcohol drinkers, and had a higher prevalence of diabetes, and they had a much lower consumption of fiber, fruits, legumes, nuts, and seeds, and somewhat lower consumption of carbs and vegetables, but that was, that was pretty small. They had a higher consumption of added sugar, plus saturated fats, dairy products, eggs, um, and, and total fat. So right away, you see a big difference in, in the, the ends of the spectrum and the people who eat the most versus the least of either ultra processed foods or animal foods. And that's hard to control for in these studies. And that what's, that's what, in my mind, makes these much less interesting unless there are some dramatic findings. So cut to the chase. What were the findings? Well, for an, animal products across the board, there was no difference. There was no difference in mortality in the people who ate more or less animal products. And, and in a way, that makes sense. I mean, since this was sort of a healthier population in general, even though the people who ate animal products were less healthy than those who ones who didn't, according to the baseline characteristics, there was still no difference in all-cause mortality. And that's, I mean, that's pretty telling. The lack of an effect tells you that if there is an effect, it is minuscule or that there simply isn't an effect, right? So um, I think that's pretty telling. And again, the, this knock on animal foods as being inherently evil or inherently dangerous is just wrong from a health perspective. We just don't have strong enough data to really say all animal foods are harmful and should be avoided and you will improve your health by avoiding animal foods. That just doesn't hold up. And this is one more study to suggest that. Now for the ultra processed foods, it was a little different. When comparing the 90th to the 10th percentile of the proportion of dietary energy from ultra processed foods, the hazard ratio was 1.14. That's pretty small. 1.14 was the hazard ratio for increased risk of all-cause mortality, which I have to admit, it was kind of surprising. Like I would expect it to be a lot more for ultra-processed foods. I would expect it to have a really significant contribution. But here's the thing. Again, what population are we talking about? We're not talking about a a, a predominantly obese population with metabolic dysfunction um, and type 2 diabetes we're talking about a much healthier baseline population. So from that standpoint, I guess maybe it's not a surprise that the contribution to ultra processed foods and all cause mortality was less impressive. And really at this level, it could certainly be statistical noise because of the baseline um, healthy user bias and the poor data collection and just the other confounding variables that affect such a low hazard ratio. So ultra processed foods really didn't have much of a contribution to all cause mortality in this seven plus year study um, in this healthy population. So 
Again, that's what I think makes this interesting and uninteresting at the same time. Interesting in the way that we interpret it, right? We could say, see, ultra processed foods are really harmful and dangerous and you shouldn't eat them. Or we could say, actually, in this population, they, they kind of weren't because it was such a small difference. And then at the same time, we can say, look, animal products certainly had no difference. There was, a, again, a tiny increase um, for simply red meat by itself. But again, for this type of study, it really doesn't mean much at all um, and can't draw any serious conclusions from that. So it brings back that it's not the food itself. It's the context of the food, the overall diet, the baseline health, the other healthy attitudes. Those things probably factor so much more than whether it's animal food or plant food or whether it's red meat or chicken or fish. It's, it's the context of the health um, in context of the diet. And I think that's what this study sort of sort of highlights, not on purpose. I mean, if you just read the, the abstract and, and, and just jump to conclusions, you may not pick that up. But when you dig into it, I think that's what this study really helps us see. So hope that was helpful. Um, if it was, click thumbs up and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you next time here on Diet Doctor News on YouTube. Thanks a lot, everybody.